Hey, Alice. Hello. Don't be looking so mad, girl. <laughs> you be so serious. You be looking mad. I be scared. Like, damn, she about to beat my ass. <laughs> I just got off of work. Yeah, you did tell Sorry. me. You've been working a lot because me and you have been communicating the last couple of days. I know you've been putting in overtime and all that. Yes. Tired. So, I understand. Given the circumstances, I know it might sound like a dumb question, but given the circumstances, how you feeling today? Uh... Just drained overall, but I'm okay. You okay? Mm -hmm. So before we get into everything, I want to ask you, did you see the last interview on Atlanta Street Interviews with Josias and the white couple? Yes, I did. You saw it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for right now. And I'm, I'm just going to really get right into it. Um, do you feel that your son, Josias, is being exploited by Marcus from Atlanta Street Interviews? Yes, I do. I think he's taking things as a joke. He's not considering, you know, hey, this is someone's child for real. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he just doing too much. Some, he's just really doing too much. Right. You know, I showed my mom some of Josiah's videos because she kind of keeps up with my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't even finish watching like one interview and she shook her head and she said, I can only imagine what that girl going through. I can only imagine what that girl going through seeing her baby on there like that. So, yeah, you know, it's not a joke. A mother hurts all the time, just like a father. Mm -hmm. But it's like this is a hurtful, stressful situation. So why are you playing with it? Mm -hmm. And then to be laughing and joking or to think that their child is going to even take you so serious because you're a stranger. Like, I just don't agree with none of it. I really don't. And it, it really ticks me off, but I have to control my health mm -hmm. and control my stress level. Yeah. So, because yeah, I see, got things going on. Right. You said you had some stomach issues, you had some surgeries and all that. So mm -hmm. that, I, I understand you going through all that you work. And I know you're working hard because I've been communicating with you. So I know how hard, you work put in overtime. You're not some just lazy mother out here. Just I know that you've been working, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, how did you feel, Alice, the first time that you saw Josiah's on Marcus's channel? What what was the... Be just real with it. I, at first, I thought, it, like I said, I thought it was a joke. I thought he was one of his friends just, you know, making little story blogs. Well, you know how kids do. They make their own YouTube channel. So at first, I thought it was a joke, but then it was getting serious and serious and, and 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 it very emotional and hurtful at some point because I'm just like, don't anybody understand like really this is someone's child that has mental issues, mm -hmm. that's been on medications and, and 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 he's now basically it's a it's a kid that then got with the wrong crowd and now he's out there doing God knows what. And I'm just hoping and praying that ain't nobody really like uh, in his head and thinking like, hey, this is the way to live. Go do this type stuff. Because I'm going to tell you that because that last video messed me up. He was in Woodstock, some rural part of Georgia with some white people that I think that they said that they had um, they was autistic. They, admit, they admitted to doing drugs. Now, when Marcus... See, that's what I'm saying. Like, how did he... He don't know... He knows only Buckhead Atlanta. He only knows certain parts of Atlanta and that he he's been he there for these last year. Huh? He said he met them people on the bus. This, this, and I don't believe that either. And if he did, like at the end of the day, how is he getting in contact with Marcus for Marcus to come pick him out? That, now that's Why what, can't that's I what, get in contact with him? Why can't his dad get in contact with him? Why can't we just call him and say, hey, let me come pick you up? That, like, what is the deal? I'm not going to overtalk you because on my last interview, they told me up in the comments because they said that I overtalked the last girl. So I was about to overtalk you, but I was like, let me pull back. They ain't about to drag me in this video. <laughs> I ain't about to do nothing to Josiah's mama where they going to come for my ass on this video like they did the last video because they told me up in the last video. But mm -hmm. you're right because when Marcus started the video, the last video where Josiah was with, I was about to call them people some meth heads, but I ain't even going to call them people no meth heads because I don't know them people like that. But to me, the man did say they was on drugs. To me, they looked like they was slow and they looked like they was some meth heads. 
Um, I don't know how Josiah's got with them people, but when Marcus started the video, he said that Josiah had called him to come pick him up. My thing is, once he got there, he started recording, but he didn't, Josiah didn't leave with him. The woman, the Josiah didn't leave with him. Now, the the, the man that, uh, the husband, mm -hmm. he seemed like he wanted Josiah to go away because the wife was enjoy, enjoying Josiah a little bit too much. So he wanted that black, he wanted he wanted that black king to go away because he couldn't live up to what, whatever Josiah was doing. Okay, but my thing is, Marcus, what, why did you go there? Because Josiah did not leave with you. You said in the beginning of the video that Josiah called you to come pick him up, but but Josiah didn't leave with Marcus. So what do you think about all that? Yeah, that that is like it's just like mind blowing, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, because. Ain't nobody in their right mind. I'm going to go drive all these miles out mm -hmm. to come pick you up, and then you don't get in the car. Right. And supposedly, Josiah's got so much respect for Marcus. If that was the case, why didn't he get in the car with you? Right. You paid for a bus ticket. Why didn't he go? And first of all, Tennessee ain't no way in the world that you're going from Atlanta to Tennessee to get to Columbus. I, I done rode Greyhound buses and trains and all planes and ain't no route that away. So Somebody the, lying somewhere in my in my eyes, someone lying. So do and you another think, part of me, I think is Marcus is playing. I think Marcus is really playing. Like because at the end of the day, if you did you have a mother figure? You know, did you you know what the stress level is that's going on right now? Would you would you accept this out of your kids? Would you accept someone interviewing your kids? He and has going two through daughters. What going he through? has two daughters. This is what I'm saying. If they, if if if, if shift was changed, if, if if personalities and everything was changed up, what would Marcus do? Would he appreciate an interviewer doing what he's doing with Josias? And you can you can get his hair cut. You can get get a bus ticket. Oh, but you can't get him no mental health. Or help the parents get him mental health. You can do all this. You so popular, but you can't. You can't get the mental health. I'm confused because I'm over here doing what I can, and, and I gotta start off in my city in order for it to transfer to Atlanta. And then his dad is doing other stuff. God knows what. Don't care. But as long as it's helping Joe Sias out, I'm all for it. Right. You know, I don't care what he say. I know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I know before I leave this earth, my son needs to be in a facility and getting clean. That's all I know. Because at the end of the day, something does happen to me. Josiah is going to go left. Because while everybody everybody can see and know that Josiah has zero respect for his dad. When it comes to me, he has some respect because I'm not the yes man. I'm never going to be the yes man. Mm -hmm. You're never going to bring all your homeless friends or whoever your friends up in my house. It's not going to happen. I got rules and regulations everywhere in life. You got rules and regulations. So I'm just not about to have it. And I just think Marcus is taking some stuff at, um, as a joke. Like it's fun time. Like <laughs> he's grown. <laughs> you ain't distressed him or talked to him about AIDS. Did that's what, oh my god i'm gonna tell you a story i when i saw that video i actually had tears in my eyes because i'm from los angeles my family from the south so sometimes people be like boy you country because you but you from la i'm from la but my family from the south so um sometimes people don't realize that i'm from california but i had a friend here in california who i'm not gonna say his name or anything like that or give any information on him but he moved to atlanta he invited me to a birthday party. I hadn't seen him in, man, I hadn't seen him in probably about six, seven years. So I fly to Atlanta and I get in an Uber. I take an Uber from my hotel to his house and I knock on the door. When I knocked on the door and he opened the door, he looked like a walking skeleton. He looked like death. And you know the reason why he looked like that. Atlanta is a hot spot for HIV and AIDS. Prior to Josias's last interview, I didn't know that Josias was bisexual. Um, and so I was afraid for him, but I became more afraid for him after that last interview when I when he said everything that he was saying. And then so, I don't know where this bisexual stuff is coming. 
I, when he was around, first of all, Josiah came to me at 14. He didn't get fully back into my care until he was 17. He was in a foster home and well, not foster home. It's like a foster independent living facility for kids that they can't figure out which parent they're going to go to. So that's what CPS does. Mm -hmm. Right. And I called CPS just actually a couple of days ago just to give them a heads up, because at the end of the day, Josias is on extended foster care, mm -hmm. meaning I can call them right now up until he's 24. And let them know because I have the I am legal guardianship. They left him in my care. That's what so I want to I ask call you. Them. I don't mm -hmm. want to cut Go you ahead. off because they about they about Go to tear ahead. me up in the comments. Like they, 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 they told my black ass up in them comments last other time because like, they said over talk that girl. But the only reason I over talk that girl is because some of the stuff she said wasn't making sense, and I wanted her to mm -hmm. I didn't want her to look crazy. I wanted yeah. her to make sense. So you ain't about to sit up here and just tell me no bullshit. And I'm about to be like, oh, okay, I'm not going to question yeah. it. You know, so that's yeah. the reason I over talked her. That is true. The right. extended care is true when they have mental problems. So that's what I want to ask you. Is there a way right now, since you said when you talked to Marcus that Josias was on seven different medications, I don't need to know what Josias issues is today. Nobody business. Mm -hmm. That's your business. Mm -hmm. That's Josias business. But mm -hmm. since he is on seven different medications, even though he's in even though he is an adult, is there anything that you can do or that we can do to intervene to so so somebody can say, wait a minute, he's been on these interviews. Um, he's not receiving the the care that he needs. He's not capable of making his own decisions if he's not on his medication. Is there anything that we can do or that you can do to send somebody to have him placed in a facility to get on his medication? Well, that's what I'm doing here. They said it has to start in the city that I am in. Okay. And then I, they'll make the report. They got they got their report, and mm -hmm. then they're going to transfer it to down here at CPS at their report. And mm -hmm. then they'll get in contact with Atlanta, and then the, the mental hygiene warrant will be even thicker, if right. that makes sense, right. to where, I like I already told them, he's not going to come willingly. They was right. like, but, I, but if I sign this paper, you know, of they was like, you know, you will be able willingly to, because he right. has stuff dealing with so, he has mental issues now he yep, got on drugs and, and stuff yeah yep. of course and so now they're like okay well so we're gonna have to sneak up on and i and i said y'all probably are just gonna have to talk to him but at this point i didn't i i gotta save him some kind of way and he might hate me for it mm -hmm. it don't matter but at the at this point i, I i'm just so over emotionally a wreck mind-blowing wreck over here that you know what can i do like what like no one sits there and goes to sleep and wakes up and be like damn like what what next can i do right. to help so my son i'm glad to hear that you have already started the process of trying to make that happen because that was the first question that i had i was like it's, since he's mm -hmm. supposed to be on medication he can't make decisions for himself he so cannot there, make decisions right. for himself. Like, I don't know why and, and what they're acting really... like he's able-bodied or he's he's okay to do. Or Joe Sides like, now I told you to do this. Like, if he's not listening to any adult of, official as far as his parents, for one, mm -hmm. and then, you know, his siblings and other family members, what makes you think he's going to listen to you, sir? Every time I watch those videos, it's just and like you know the thing whoa. is, how do you feel about this? I don't want to cut you off. Like they're gonna tear me up. They gonna no matter what I say, they're gonna say that either I'm against Marcus, they're gonna say that I'm trying to hey, I'm a content creator, but I'm fair. And the reason that you're on here is because I'm my mama, my best friend. And like mm -hmm. I said, when I told when I showed my mama the video, she said I can only imagine what that girl is going through right now, seeing her baby on that screen like that. I'm not blaming anybody for anything. I'm not I'm not blaming Marcus for anything. I'm not blaming Josiah's daddy for anything. I'm not blaming for you for anything. The reason that you own here is because I want people to understand how you feel about these interviews as a mother. Yeah, that is yeah. the reason that you are on here right now. So it ain't no blame. I'm neutral in this situation. I'm going right. to let you tell your story, how you feel about your baby being on and, these interviews. And I'm not here to bash Marcus either because at the end of the day, yeah, I'm miles away, and yeah, I check his his stories all the time just to see if I be able to see my baby. Like, mm -hmm. but to wake up and to feel like you may not see your child that that right there is just. How do you feel about this? 
A lot of people see Marcus doing little things. For example, they see him buying Josiah a pair of shoes, letting Josiah take a shower over his house, or buying him a bus ticket for $150. But what people not realizing is, baby, that's chunk change compared, with, compared to what Marcus is uh, reeling in for Josiah's videos. It's $150 ain't shit compared to what he's bringing in on Josiah's. Again, that's my opinion. That's not me trying to sway you. You can totally tell me that I'm inappropriate, but how no, do you feel that's about that's not because I've been I've been seeing that, and I'm like, well, where's Joe Sauce's cash at? Right. Yes. I've been seeing that, and I'm just like, where is his money at? Yes. What are you giving him? Yesterday was the only day that I saw him put up a cash app, but it for Josiah's in a, in a Josiah's interview, but it wasn't for Josiah's. It was the the it was the husband's cash app. And the reason I know it was the husband's cash app is because I looked at that name and I Googled it. And then I went on to Facebook and I found the husband's profile. So I guess the white people told Marcus, uh-uh, you ain't about to record us or nothing. You better put up that cash app. But I noticed that when he's interviewing Josiah by himself, Josiah's cash app is not up there. So it's almost like as if, I don't know if it's true, but it's almost like, yeah, me and Josiah have this relationship. I can shoot him a couple of dollars here and there and I ain't got to put up his cash app. I can put up my own cash app to benefit. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this. Even if Josiah don't have a cash app, right? You got a cash app. Uh, his daddy got a cash app. Yeah, and then hold on. Not only that, because I'm also putting this under investigation too, because it should not be Josiah sleeping on a concrete. You want to buy bus tickets? Where's Ken at? Where his where his uh cooler at for his food and stuff? Where his blankets and pillows and stuff at? So he if he want to be outside, because there are people out there that that oh, are gypsies name. that that like living uh in the streets instead of uh paying bills. Where's his tent? I, I know where, about where is, Where's his pillow, with pillowcases at? Where his sleeping bags at? You want to buy shoes? Forget the, at the end of the day, thank you for the shoes, but what about where he laying at? And I, I didn't know nothing about him taking those showers at Marcus's house. I didn't know nothing about that. And then you're making videos that I see saying that he stunk up your car and making it like it's a joke. Like, but he's taking showers at your house, so I didn't know that either. So it's just like a bunch of stuff is 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 is, is coming to the top. Do you? And I'm that, investigating. Do it. you think that Josiah is addicted to the fame because he calls himself? Hard shit. Yeah, my son loves to be famous. That's the whole reason why we really moved to Atlanta. It's because he wanted to pursue his career, his music career further, and he also wanted to pursue his uh mechanics further. Like I said, Josiah knew how to, he went to school uh, in Columbus, Ohio to help uh people who have prostate leg, I mean, not uh prostate legs, but am amputated legs and hands. Amputees. He know how to make those remote control hands for them. He know how to make those legs for He's the- He's super the talented. Don't, don't he know how to do all of that. He might have some type of mental disorder, but Josiah is almost like a savant. Josiah plays instruments. Josiah sings. Josiah could be he a like, hip hop motherfucking superstar, baby. Yeah, because Josiah might can't read no note, but if you uh, let him put some headphones on, he's gonna mm -hmm. copy every beat that he hears right. up on there. He's, he's not. He he's very smart yeah. when it comes to that type of stuff, and that's just mm -hmm. that goes for anything that he's interested in. But then these drugs took over and I, I, and at the end of the day I do see like yes yeah, the different Joe size but now I'm starting to feel like is someone just giving it to him because where is the money coming from where he's buying it is someone actually the dealer sitting on the side just waiting on Joe size to finish his videos to hand him a crack rock like cuz at this point that's where I'm at do you think that Marcus is enabling Joe size I, at this point, it's up and down. Honestly, it's up and down for me. I don't know if he's doing enabling or, or in, I don't know which one he's doing, but I know it ain't right. And I know deep down in my soul, something ain't right. Do you have Josiah's phone number? No. Marcus didn't give it to you? No. Do Does James, Marcus' dad, have Josiah's phone I, number? I have no clue. But one thing I do know is I have Marcus's number and several other family members on my side of the family has hit up Marcus and he has not reached back out to them. He has not. Mm -mm. Now that's interesting. Uh -huh. so, and, and for when I very first met Marcus, I'm like, now what is taking him so long to reach out to me?
And I told him that in my video before. Like, hey, you had me a little skeptical because you was all up James's behind reaching out to him, but you wasn't reaching out to me. Now, one thing that made me, I don't have nothing against James. And I, I think that both of y'all love y'all baby. Y'all, y'all might have y'all problems. Yeah, of course. That's one, that's one thing we have agreed on is yeah. that we love Joe Sires. Yeah. And the one thing that made me really, my heart go out to you is because you told a story and you told a story about how you got out of jail and Josiah's wanted a picture with you and James and how you mm -hmm. was all for it and you have been trying to cooperate. Now, I found a video and I downloaded the video. There's a video of Marcus talking to James. James does not know that he's being recorded. Mm. In that video, James says, he talks about the birthday party and he says that y'all wanted a picture and everything and that he was the one that was like, nah, what are we doing this for? We, you know what I'm saying? So I understand, I believe that you have been trying to make things work. And that's nothing against James because y'all this boy's father. So I, I'm for both of y'all. I, I ain't for just you. I ain't for just James. I'm for, for Josiah's. You can't make things work with a narcissist. I'm just going to keep it real. That's what James is. He's always been that way. That's why I got out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm just, and he knows I'll tell him to his face. That but James is not the same when he in front of this face. Oh, it's a whole different person. Mm -hmm. He know that I ain't with the with the bull crap that he feeding Marcus and everybody else. Even his side of the family has been trying to reach out to Marcus, defending my side. Really? Yes, because so at James, the end of the day, James, James family has been reaching out to Marcus on your behalf, and Marcus will not has not answered him. Why do you think that is? Oh, oh, I don't know, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it because it's kind of fishy. That's what real fishy to me. And I've sent Marcus's paperwork of our last paperwork. I've sent Marcus our paperwork of the CPS case mm -hmm. and who won the case and who was the abuser, who was the attacker. You think he paid in any mind? That's not, that's why I be, be frustrated with Marcus about. He pick and choose on what he want to talk about and deal with. Because he's a content well, that, creator. And in his right. defense, he's a content creator. But I don't think as a content creator, some things I'm not going to play with. At I the ain't going to play with day, nobody's child. I ain't going to play with nobody's the, child. Right. At the end of the day, everybody can do exactly what they want to make money and put it in their pockets. But when it comes to somebody else's kids, tread lightly. Right. Because there's some of us out there that will go crazy for their kid. Like literally crazy, even out on him the and anybody is, else. You told me, I know you have a lot of health conditions. Like I said, the reason that this interview took so long to even happen is because you've been working. You've been yeah, working. I've been working. You've been, like, we can do this interview. You've been working. You've been doing overtime. You've been, are you sending me pictures of you on the bus? You've been grinding. Because so. I'm trying to get emergency money. I'm trying to get money together for Josiah's. I'm trying... I'm even uh, probably getting ready to start him a fund me page because I need all the help I can get. Like I'm, I'm, I'm firm believer. Like my grandma used to say, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And I'm no, I ain't no parent out here perfect. Ain't no parent out here gonna see her and try to tell me they perfect. If your kid, if you sending your kid down the right path and he decide to go left. And you try to get him to go back right. Sometimes you need that village but to help out. But he can't out. even make them decisions for himself because he needs to be on his medication. So it ain't, it ain't like he can even make those decisions for himself. That, that brings me to what I want to tell you. Um, what I want to ask you this before I just do it because you talked about GoFundMe's and all this stuff. I think it would be mm -hmm. so dope if we could raise enough money for you to not only cover your medical expenses and the shit that you got to take care of where you at, but that you would have enough extra money to actually maybe take a trip to go see Josiah's. Like, is it okay yeah. for me to put your cash app up so that if people feel in their heart to donate, they can donate to you so that you can cover some of this stuff? Oh, yeah, sure. Most definitely. Because I would love for you to go see Josiah's and see uh, his reaction to seeing you in person just like he saw his daddy. I would, I would love and to then, see that. Yeah, and then I, I would love to actually do that, but I, I really... I really got to watch because I I just did like eight tubes of blood work today before I went to work. Right. Like I have got to watch because I can't sit there even be going into a different city and then a COVID or anything. I can't catch nothing. You got I can't medical issues. Around nothing. You got medical I have issues. serious medical issues mm -hmm. that I've got to tread lightly right. at the end of the day. And I know that I'm not going to go to Atlanta by myself. His brother is supposed to be here. 
in a couple of days, and then we're going to go up there. And Did then Josiah talk up. to his brother at all? See, that's the thing. Josiah know that when it comes to him and his brother, they're like this. He's claiming they have an issue. They don't have an issue. It's just Keyshawn, his older brother, going to read right through him. Right, because he calls it. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, they're the closest. Even jo- Keyshawn knows some secrets with Joe Sides. I don't even know. Siblings. They siblings. Yeah. So yeah. They're, they're the, it's, the, it's his only brother. They never had an issue. Never had a problem. Never had a fallout. Joe Sides and that, the drugs got that all up in his head thinking that they got one. They ain't never had one. Let me ask you this. How did you feel when you was talking to Marcus and Marcus turned your interview into something else when he started asking you about you selling your body and all that. Because I was like, what the... When, when I saw that baby, I said, this, no, this nigga ain't just asking this woman about prostitution, selling her body and all this. Like, how did you I feel, feel like about he that? Was, I feel like he was a little bit too concerned on that. That's why I kept saying, that's I'm not about to bring all that up. I'm not about to do certain stuff now. You're doing did, too much. Did you see my last interview with the girl, Monique? Yeah, I seen that. Okay, now Monique definitely has some some issues because Monique lied on me and told me that I, she lied and said that I told her to sell her body. Now, baby, right. <laughs> but at first, I believe some of Monique's stories because I watched uh, Monique's first interview on Atlanta Street uh, interview. Somebody sent me the video. And Monique now, she has her own issues. And I will say that she she is a liar. She will lie on you because Lord knows I ain't never told that girl to sell her body. What I told her was, I said, Monique, in our interview, you said that um, you and Marcus had had unprotected sex. If you're going to be out here doing that, protect yourself. Now, Mm -hmm. I don't have nothing against Monique, and I want people to still support her because I know that she is dealing with a lot mentally. The -hmm. reason that I still halfway believe Monique is because in Monique's interview with Marcus, she kept talking about how tight she was. She kept saying that how men would climax because she's so tight. And so that led me to believe that Marcus probably did proposition her and ask her, um, hey, can I pay you for some sex? Because she was advertising so much. Does it make it right? It doesn't make it right because you know that this girl still has some mental issues and stuff. So, you know, she's still traumatized. You know, she's still going through some stuff. So, you know... I'm going to say this, that, you know, your questions are professional and you don't take it too far. Marcus's questions sometimes be off the wall and ridiculous, like he's trying to create a comedy so- a show sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, certain things that he asks, is, from my personal opinion, it's like he know who to prey on to get his show. Because anybody else, like, no. They're, they're going to be like, no, that's not, that wasn't the deal. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I really didn't, like, you know, I'm, I always said this, I said this to my family members, like, I really did not appreciate him calling me acting like he was checking on me and then he still was recording me without me knowing you did not know that marcus was recording i you? did not know when i was devastated and in tears after our interview yeah because he i was called like, me minute. back wait a minute i'm like no I'm, I'm going to interrupt you this time because people were dragging you talking about she got boogers in her nose she crying that it was makes, a piercing it makes they so dumb it makes sense now because you didn't know that she was being recorded yeah, but and then that that's dumb made sense. At my when I first started my job, I couldn't have my nose piercing, mm-hmm. so I put a a small nose piercing to where you couldn't see it, and you just only seen the ball sticking out one side. People are so ignorant; they need to go on somewhere I first. Got you. So you Irritated. did not know that you was being recorded? I did not know I was being recorded. He was like, I just wanted to call you after the interview and check up on... He he clicked out that part. Baby, this, he this, clicked baby, out that part this. and then still out of the video. I, I, I don't want to cut you off because they're going to mm-hmm. drag me. They're going to drag the fuck out of me. because <laughs> Trust me, they're not going to like this. I'm about to be called every kind of hater. I'm about to be called... every. Everything but a child of God is well, what I'm about to I don't know why. I don't know why because at the end of the day, I'm expressing my truth. Right, and, and that's I don't have what against Marcus. I don't have nothing against Marcus. I'm a content creator. Mm-hmm. I'm asking you to come on my channel, just like I would ask Josiah's daddy, just like I would ask the girl to come on my channel. I don't want y'all to say nothing but what y'all want to say. Mm-hmm. You know that's that's how I go. So, but I'm gonna mm-hmm. get dragged. They don't call me a hater. Talking about I'm clout chasing. I'm a content creator, so it's not clout chasing. Of course, I want content, but I'm well, not trying to bash it, nobody. It, at the end of the day, 
there's parents out there that belong to Josiah's that are out there worried about there's aunties, there's uncles, there's cousins, there's nieces, there's nephews. I, I have a grandson. Okay. Josiah's is an uncle. He loves Keyshawn Jr. Aww. So it's just like, and he and, and then I have a step granddaughter, and he loves her too. So it's just like you're playing with your fire. You're just really playing with fire. Yeah. And I really think a lot of these interviews now it's like really going too far because this is not a joke mm -hmm. at all. What so regardless that he's grown, he really ain't grown. He's not. He's twenty years old, but his mind ain't twenty. Even, so why James is he playing that? With him? Even James said that. Even James has said that. Even James has said that Josiah sometimes thinks like a 14-year-old and stuff. Even so I feel father. like Marcus, I feel like Marcus with him having kids of his own is just doing too much. He really doing too much and not being professional with what he's out there set to do. You're not out there to uh sit there and belittle someone or 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 to bash someone because they have an older one day, but then I hear that you letting him take showers at your house. So if he stink one day, why don't you take him? Why don't you take him to take the showers? Why ain't he sleeping in your basement or something? Or why are you spending bus fare that he's never going to go uh, fully where he's supposed to go on a bus ticket? Why ain't he got a tent? How do you feel? Why don't about he have pillowcases? Why, why is he sleeping on the dead concrete if you buying shoes and this, that, and the third? Let's, let's go back there. How you want to spend your money on stuff. How do you feel about Josiah's going over Marcus' house to take showers? <clears throat> I don't believe my son is gay, but uh, if he is, teach his own. But I, you know, I'm uncomfortable. But if Josiah feels comfortable, I have no choice but to, you know, let it be, honestly. But me, no, I don't feel comfortable. But if he needs a shower, hey, take a shower in the in the pond for all I care. Wash your behind, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 uneasy about a lot of things. Right. So what I'm gonna but, do, Alice? Like you, you've been so gracious. I know you're tired because I know I've been contacting you, so I know how you've been working. So <laughs> for you to even be here right now, I'm like, thank you so much for this. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's. It's a great opportunity. It's going to help my channel grow, but it's also going to, and I'm not going to lie about that. This interview is going to help my channel. I'm not hiding that. It's going to help, but it's also, I'm not trying to create a narrative. I just want you to say what you was going to say anyway and how you was feeling. Do you feel like I've done that? Do you feel like I just let you say what you want to say and I ain't trying to sway you? Mm. Yo, your camera, Hello? Yeah, your, clam, your camera went blurry. Do you feel okay, like I'm trying to sway you in any way since we've been communicating? No, no, you haven't. No, man, I just want to get the message out there. I don't know how far it's going to go, but I just want people to really be mindful that this is a sick child out there. He's it's not, not an adult. It's not and it's not entertainment. This ain't a comedy show. This is someone's real life. Someone's real life child, baby, that they had in 2003. Like, come on. Like, this is not maybe, nothing to be playing with. You say it's 2003, not. that just, baby, I was 20 years old in 2003. I'm a grown ass man. So when you say that, it's just like, damn, he, that is, that's a child still. And it, He's it, a it, child. Yeah. This is 2003. May 7, 2003. He is still my baby at the end of the day. You said Have May some 7? Respect. Yeah, May 7th. Oh, he a Taurus. Josiah's hard-headed in the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Josiah's ain't gonna listen to nobody. Yeah. May 7th, no. he ain't gonna no. listen to nobody. You have to have medical intervention or the courts intervene. Yep. And it's gonna happen because I got a couple of people that's gonna get a nice little court hearing. Well, well, nice I'm little gonna, papers. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post your cash app. I <laughs> hope that people find it in their hearts to donate to you so that you can kind of not have to work so hard and so that you can when it's convenient for you because I know you can't just be, I'm not expecting you to just jump on a, a bus or a plane to go see Joe Sides. I know that there has to be things that you have to do in order to make that happen. But if you would allow me, I will post your cash app so that people can donate to make things a little bit easier on you so that you can start making that process happen so that you can go see your baby and you can have the courts intervene to get him off the streets. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yep, yep, and I really appreciate it. All right. I really appreciate you letting me speak freely and, you know, it's about Josiah. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
So I All appreciate right, so it. Is there anything else? Because we we pretty much we know how you feel. Is there anything else that you want to say before I end this interview? Because thousands of people are going to watch this. This is going to be a big interview. Thousands of people are going to see it. So if there's any, y'all just you- pray. I'm just going to say pray for me and my family. That's just the number one. I keep God first every step I take. So, and I pray every day I wake up and he is still breathing. Because this, this is no joke. Mental illness is no joke. I suffer from depression. I have a video on my channel where I talk about my depression. I talk about how um, dark it has gotten. I talk about how my mother is the reason that I'm still alive today. So, I understand when it comes to mental illness. I understand depression. I understand all that. I've been through some real shit in my life. A lot of people look at me. And they think that I'm the boy next door and I carry myself a certain way and they have no idea what I have overcome to be where I am today. Some people say, oh, you travel to different countries. You look like you got money. You got this, that, and the third. But you just never know what someone has gone through if you don't know. Right. You just don't know. So I, the beautiful, you'd have been through some shit. You'd have been in jail for 10 years. You didn't did all kinds of stuff. You've been completely transparent. You've been completely... You know, just transparent. I, I got to respect that. I respect your transparency. Don't let nobody ever um, use your past against you. Shit no, I'm happens. not. Shit happens. Right. Okay. Ain't nobody perfect. So I don't care. I don't care what no one thinks of me. Mm-hmm. Honey, walk in my shoes and let me see what you did differently. Mm-hmm. So. All right, Alice. Like, it's been, um, you know, I wish I was talking to you under different circumstances, but I did enjoy talking to you. <laughs> I did. I did. did. This was great. I really appreciate it. So, okay. One thing I want to ask you before we leave, is it okay? I'm going to title the video. Um, You didn't know that you were being recorded the first time. I think that nobody knows that. Nobody knows that you were, nobody knows that Marcus recorded you without you knowing it. Mm. Yeah. The crying crying session. Yeah. The crying session. Because I believe he did three videos. I believe that one where I was crying hysterically and I was in the bathroom. Yeah, I did not know. He did was you know it at all? He was going to record you at all? Not uh, when he called. Not that last video because he called me like, hey, I just calling to check on you after the interview. Were you and then they came in. Time? No, I didn't get anything either. That's what I, that's why I'm just like. Okay, he didn't even ask me. He didn't. You know, I'm gonna take care of you. Yeah, and he didn't even ask me what you just asked me at the end of the video. Do you mind if? He didn't ask me none of that. And then after all the videos that I've seen Josiah on, I've not once seen Josiah a cash app. Do you think that I was fair in what I offered you to be up here? Yes, I think that was fair because this is y'all's. You know, this is y'all's. It's not none of mine. And I'm You're interviewing me. Right, and I'm going. You know? So even if the video does thousands of views, I still might not make back what I paid you for the interview because I'm a growing YouTuber. So right. I feel like I paid you, well, I paid you more than I paid the last girl because you, Josiah's mama, you, you hey, I want to make sure that you, okay, I see how hard you've been working. <laughs> mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't want to waste no more of your time, sweetie. Like, you've been just great. Just what, what else? What else? What else? Is there anything else before we get off of here? No, if y'all see my son show love to him, don't hate him. He's just a baby lost. Don't nobody himself. hate Josiah's. People love Josiah's. Your son is special. You what you're talking about? Don't hate him. Everybody <laughs> loves Josiah's. Everybody loves Jos- Josiah's as a star. Well, we want to see I, him and, get off of drugs. We want to see him get treatment. We just want. I just want him out there healthy. I don't want him out there like that. Mm-hmm. I really don't. All right. Um, <laughs> you know what? So you have my phone number. Mm-hmm. If you feel like. This this video is gonna do well. If you feel like at any point that you need a platform to say what you need to say, or you need to rebut anything, just hit me up, and I got you. All right. Just hit All me right. up. If you feel like at any point, no matter you know you want to feel like okay, I need to say something or respond to something, you you mm-hmm. you can go on your own YouTube channel or go live yourself and say it. But if you feel like you want a place to say it, you got me. All right. All right, thank you so much. All right, I know you're tired because I've been keeping up with you for the last couple of days. You've been working your tail off. <laughs> yeah. So, so you get you some mm-hmm. rest, and I'm gonna post your cash app so that if people feel in their hearts to support, they can support so that we can try to ease this burden off of you and get you down there when it's when it's appropriate, so that you can intervene and get the courts, you know, involved, so we can get Josiah off the streets. Is that is that a, that sound good? Yes. Yes. Thank All you right. so much. You you enjoy the rest of your evening, okay? You too. Thank you. All right.
Bye. Take care. <laughs>